Hello and welcome to another episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. Today I'm going to be making over this model of a 1908 Grand Prix Mercedes. This model was one of the first series of yesteryear models that Matchbox bought out between the years 1956 and 1959. This one was donated by Lewis Martin from Whittlesea. Now Lewis tells me in his letter that he was getting a box of Matchbox cars out of his loft and he sorted some out for me and then they had a bonfire and he threw the box on the bonfire and realised that he'd left a model car in it. So he retrieved the box and as you can see this model car was severely damaged during the fire. But he sent it to me regardless. So I'm going to give it my best shot Lewis and thank you very much for setting me a challenge such as this. I do enjoy these really mangled up cars. Something tells me I won't be able to reuse these tyres. There you can see underneath it's the yesteryear number 10, the Grand Prix Mercedes. I've got to start somewhere so I'm going to take the base off. It's held on by these splayed legs on these small metal protrusions. Using my long nose pliers I'm just going to try and squeeze those legs inboard slightly and maybe I can give myself enough free play to remove the base without damaging it too much. So with the assistance of a very small screwdriver here, using a bit of leverage off of the front axle, the front end comes out quite easily. And there's no damage there and no distortion as far as I can see. The back end held on a little bit tighter but with a tiny little bit of teasing and flexing, each time I flexed it, it came off a little bit more until voila, there we are. The base is separated and did not break. Now, this astonished me. Look at the length of the steering wheel stem on this. That is a surprise. I did not expect that whatsoever. It's crazy long. I think it must have been held into position by that lump of metal there in the base and maybe it was to speed up assembly on the assembly line where they didn't have to think about where to put the steering wheel it just went in naturally who knows so I had to cut the ball off the end of that to remove the steering wheel here's a close-up of it it's got four spokes and it looks in good order now I'm trying to take these melted tires off of the rims what I'm doing is cutting them very carefully with some side cutters and I'm being extremely careful that I do not damage the wheel itself. And this rubber is quite soft and peels off quite easily. There's a few lumps there that are going straight in the bin. The left hand wheels are going to be tricky because there's plastic in the spokes. Now I'm going to remove the wheels. To do that, I'm going to take that little ridge off the end of the axle using my grindstone in a rotary tool. This one, the shoulder's been worn away because I've used it that much. So I'm going to try and make a crisper edge to make cutting the end of the axle off easier. Now, people are gonna tell me there are some things you can and can't do with the grindstone. No doubt this is one of the things you can't do. But it did work out well and my grindstone didn't explode. So now this has got a nice sharp 90 degree shoulder and that will help me to, as I said, wear away the end of the axle there without damaging the wheel. Otherwise I'd have to get too close to the wheel if I'd left that curved shoulder on the edge. So that was the rear, now the front. You can see the technique I'm using. I'm holding the axle through with my left finger and I'm holding the wheel away from the grindstone with my thumb. So that went quite smooth and no damage to the wheels, which is always good. Now on close inspection here, this could prove to be awkward. The plastic has melted into the spoked area of the rim. It could be tricky to get that out. Now for the replacement tyres I 3D printed some of these and they are a little bit rough. This here is the spare wheel hub on which two spare tyres fit at the rear of the vehicle. 
Here's some drawings I made to give me a guide as to how to make the tyres and the spare tyre hub. I made a mistake here, I only printed five tyres. I should have had six because of the two spares, I forgot about that. Now a lot of people reckon that if you bathe these 3D parts in vapour from acetone, it makes for a smoother print. Well, the material I use is called PLA, and just as a demonstration, I thought I would prove that the acetone does not work with PLA. So I left this overnight for 12 hours in this little bath of vapour, and I take the tyre off and inspect it, and it looks exactly the same as it did when I put it in. It's all rough on the outside. It's supposed to be smooth if you use some other material. To assist me with cleaning these spoked wheels, I thought I might try the ultrasonic cleaner. I don't know if it will work, but I'll give it a shot. I place them in this plastic basket and immerse them into the cleaning solution, and I switch the sonic cleaner on for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, I take them out and have a look at them. They look a little bit cleaner, but I'm not too impressed to tell you the truth. I'm gonna to have to try and pick that plastic out with a toothpick. Well, what do you know? I think the ultrasonic cleaner worked. It didn't remove the muck, but it certainly loosened it up. This stuff is just falling away with a prod and a poke of a toothpick. I'll give them a little bit of a clean up here with these tiny little I don't know what you call them. They're like cotton buds, but micro buds. And here's a close up of the wheel. Looks a little bit ordinary still, needs a bit of cleaning with a brush. So I try the nylon brush first. I put it back on the axle to help me hold it whilst I clean it. And that looks a hell of a lot better. I think if I give that a bit of a coat of silver paint, it will be good. Now, a real tyre, when it sits on the ground, it has a curve on each end. The 3D printed ones, because they're printed on a flat base, they don't have that. They have a sort of a, a flat side and a rounded side. So I'm going to try and shape these tyres to make them look more realistic. And to do that, I'm going to be using some various grades of emery paper, some little emery boards, and indeed a metal file. So I'm just basically uh, concentrating on the rear side of the tyre where it doesn't have that natural looking curve to the profile. This is something I thought I'd try. I glued a little bit of uh, emery paper on a pencil. Anyway, I'll show you later what they turned out like. Now before I take the paint off of this model, I want to mix up some paint to match the original paint so I can paint it when the time comes. I thought that this Tamiya Green was a pretty close match, but I was disappointed when I put it on and realised it was far too dark. Anyway, this colour green was extremely awkward to match. I used some light green, some dark green, a little bit of black and a little bit of yellow. And as you can see, I wasted a lot of paint mixing it up. I ended up with about 10 times as much as I needed, but I got there in the end, so I'll set that aside for when it comes time to paint the seat. Now for the body colour, I just cleaned the base of the footwell there, and you can see it's like a light tan colour or a flesh colour. So I'm going to use some white and yellow and see if I can match that colour too. This is a Mr. Hobby 329, and I'm mixing it with the Tamiya White. It's good to know that these paints are compatible. They're both, I believe, water-based acrylic. Now I'm using a little bit of flesh-colored paint there. It's very time-consuming, this. I can't wait to start stripping the paint, but I'm always held up at this stage where I struggle to make a match. Now in the pictures I've seen on the internet, it does look more like off-white. But here I'm looking at the real thing and it's definitely a fleshy colour. So I'm just going to go with the real thing. And maybe this colour is not a standard colour for this model, I'm not sure. 
But as I said, most of the pictures I've looked at, it looks just like off-white. Anyway, that is as near as I can get it to the original. I'm sure when it dries, it's going to look fantastic. I use this Australian Export Silver Paint out of a spray can. It's cheap and it's really good. And I dust over the wheels there and they look like new again. Now it's time to take the paint off of the body and the base. I use this gelatinous paint stripping solution. It's something I use all the time these days. I've tried the caustic soda and various other things. But I, I stick with this because I know it works 90% uh, of the time and it's relatively safe. There's no boiling hot water or vapours that make me cough and have to open the window. And I've had a few catastrophes with the caustic soda. If you watch some of my other videos you may see the outtakes of glass bowls shattering etc. And today, rather than using the kitchen sink or the bathroom sink, I'm just using a separate container with some water in it. And taking my time to ensure all of the paint is removed. I'm using this soft copper brush and this steel wire brush to get into all the nooks and crannies and polish these pieces up before I undercoat them. There's a good shot of what it says underneath the 1908 GP Mercedes. Some great detail on these models. We'll have another look at them after I've undercoated it. But check this out. On the right hand side of the model, the gears and drive chain can actually separate from the model. The other side, it's attached to the exhaust and the exhaust is riveted on. So I decided to leave the other side on, but this side I removed. And it revealed this casting mark here on the side at the rear, which is a little bit ugly and I shall try and remove it. Here's a close up of the gear and chains and look at the detail in those tiny little teeth on the cogs, it's amazing. Now using this small craft file here, I am just removing that snub of metal because it's rather unsightly. I get it down to as much as I need. I don't want to remove any other detail from the model. I just scrub that down a little bit. And when I put that chain back on, the cog should totally obscure that lump of metal. Now on the back here, there is a frame. And in that frame is stored two spare tires. This one is bent. I'm going to try and straighten it. I do hope I don't break it. Learning from my past experience, I'm not taking the shortcut and I'm going to put some heat into this to try and make the metal softer so I can bend it easily without the risk of breaking it. I've got this little gas powered blowtorch that I use and it's a marvelous thing. Now this is hot, this model. I've put a fair bit of heat into it and I, as you can see, I'm just gently changing its shape from a parallelogram to a rectangle. Now, the two sides are very straight there. It's just the top bit there, the rear, just needs to be pushed up a little bit. So I heat that up and I use long nose pliers and gentle pressure just to push that piece out and into alignment. And I think I've achieved what I set out to do. I'm happy with that. Now here's the tyres after I've rubbed them down and shaped them. Gave them a coat of undercoat and some thick black paint. The rims I sprayed with the silver aerosol can and they look nice. And the rest of the parts I'm going to give a quick dust over with some grey fine primer and then paint a top coat on of the appropriate colour. I hold the parts with some hemostats, that's those forceps things that lock, and I clip them onto those magnetic clamps to dry, and that's a really handy thing to have. 
those metal clamps and some locking forceps make spray painting all the smaller parts so much easier. Right, the undercoat has dried. Now I'm taking a nice long look at the details in this model. Once again, have a look at how crisp those 60 year old gear teeth are. There's a leather belt there holding the bonnet shut. And look how many rivets there are. Here inside the seating area, there's two pedals and some instruments. Now why is there only two pedals? What is it? Clutch and accelerator? Where's the brake? Maybe the handbrake was all they had. There's even a leaf spring on the rear of the car. Now you can see the radiator cap and the cap for the fuel tank behind the driver. And this is the radiator grill. A lot of detail in this tiny little model. This was probably cutting edge technology to make this toy when it came out in the 1950s. Just brilliant. So this is the off-white flesh colour that I've made up before. And all is not well. My spray gun is blocked and it's spluttering and the spray is intermittent. Sometimes it clears itself, but on this occasion it didn't. So now I get all mucky again because the thing's full of paint. I've had to take the nozzle off and then I back flush it with some thinners to clean out any obstruction that may be in there. And I then go around and clean out all the other orifices and jets just by squeezing this little bottle with the nozzle on and, and forcing some thinners through. Now I've just got to get out the excess thinners now before I put the paint back in. That seems to have fixed it. So here we go again, take two. Now this paint has also got a capful of levelling fluid mixed in with it and I'm hoping it's going to go on really glossy. It's something I've been experimenting with the last few models and I'm quite pleased with the results. Now these PLA 3D printed tyres are very rigid. It's a very stiff material at room temperature. But if you put it in boiling water it becomes malleable. So I've done that to assist me to put it onto the spoked wheels. Unfortunately it cools so quickly and as it does it sets solid again. So I've had to immerse it back into the hot water and heat the, the rim of the wheel up as well as the tyre to get these tyres to go onto the wheels. So that was a bit fiddly. They don't look like the originals. The originals I think had a little bit of tread on them, but I haven't mastered the 3D printing of tyre tread yet. Now here's a little bit of artistic license. I thought I'd take the liberty. I painted the steering wheel gold. It should be silver, but I like the gold. Now here's all the parts here. The wheels and the wheel carrier all ready to go back on the model. Before I do that, I'm going to just repaint the silver parts on the left hand side of the vehicle. Remember I said that this component was one component and it's riveted into position. So I figured I'd just leave it there and paint it silver afterwards, which is what I'm doing now. A little bit time consuming and fiddly. Worth doing, I think, because it saved me possibly damaging the model by having to rivet that assembly back on. Now the green paint I made, I actually watered it down a little bit too much. As you can see, it's sort of see-through really. So I ended up giving this one coat at night and the next morning, before I even had breakfast, I gave it a second coat and it came good. For the gold parts, I'm using the Pentor Gold Marker Pen. And there's three parts that are gold on the model. Ah, oh, sorry, four parts that are gold on the model. The handbrake, the radiator cap, the fuel cap, and the little 
box in front of the driver. I'm not too sure what it represents. Maybe an oil reservoir. Now all I've got to do is put the wheels on, the steering wheel in, and the base. So first up the wheels, out in my shed. That little flange or lip I ground off, I've got to reform using this modified nail in my drill press. It comes down and crushes the end of the axle back into a mushroom shape. Now to make this work slightly more efficiently, it's always a good idea to grip the axle to prevent the axle from spinning if you can. And my only advice is to take your time, don't try and rush it, because you need the end of the axle to heat up so it's easily crushed. And there you can see it's holding the wheel in on the model and it spins quite freely. So I did the rear axle and now I am placing the steering wheel back into position. And I'm guesstimating the depth it should be, or the length it should be, I should say, maybe. I'm thinking about there. So to hold it into position, I'm using one blob of super glue and a quick puff of some baking soda. And the baking soda and the super glue react together instantly, forming like a chemical weld. And there's no way that will come out now. Just got to put the base on. The base came up beautiful. That's satin black paint, by the way. I'm not too sure if I said that. Now the front sort of clips in and slides forwards. I didn't realize that when I was pulling it apart. And now a bit of prep thumb pressure here and it clicks into place beautifully. But unfortunately, in that instance, my thumb nail scratched that base off and revealed the base, base metal, ah, the base metal. So I had to touch that up with a little paintbrush. Anyway, here's a reminder of what it looked like after Lewis had recovered it from the fire. Remember, Lewis Martin from Whittlesea. And I was thinking it was impossible to fix and probably should have been chucked in the bin. But look at this. A little bit of TLC, tender loving care, a bit of time and effort and it just shows what can be brought back from the brink. I think this is a beautiful looking model. One of Matchbox's finest products, the Yesteryear series. Each and every model is just a work of art, this one included. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Marty's Matchbox Makeovers. So until next time, this is Marty saying thanks for watching and goodbye. Watch this. That's the wrong bit, you stupid <laughs> <laughs> Try again.